guys, Marco here. Welcome back to another guitar lesson. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the most amazing guitar players of all time and how he was able to influence millions of guitar players with one of his technique. I'm obviously talking about the greatest Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> For you who don't know, Jimi Hendrix was an American guitar player and a singer-songwriter. He's one of the most influential guitar players of all time and he was once rightfully labeled as the greatest instrumentalist in the history of rock music. I find it incredible that Jimi Hendrix was able to influence so many guitar players if you consider that his mainstream career was only four years. In fact, he died prematurely due to alcohol and drugs. Now, I don't listen to his music quite a lot, but there are few things in his playing that are awesome. Think about the Hendrix chord. Or the thumb technique. In this technique, the left hand thumb plays the bass note of a chord. So you wanna literally roll the thumb on top of the fret and just play the sixth string. Now this approach is excellent for two different reasons. The first one is by playing the bass note with the thumb, you keep your other fingers free to play whatever they want. Reason number two, it's easy to noodle around with the notes of the chord. So this technique works for all the chords that have the bass note on the sixth string. So we have the major chord, this is the B major chord, played with the E major shape. So it's a bar chord on fret number seven and then the E major shape. But what we're gonna do, we're going to replace the bass note with the thumb and play the low E string fret seven. We're gonna skip the A string, so we're not gonna play it, and only play the D string fret number nine, then eight, and then seven. We can also play minor chords. You just wanna put down the same chord shape, but we're gonna have the bar chord on the fret number seven. Now let's get started and let's learn how to use this beautiful thumb technique. Now the first chord we're checking out is the B major chord. We're gonna play like this. We have four groups of three notes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're gonna use the same picking pattern for the other chords. So we start with the B major, and we have six, four, three, two, three, four. Then uh, we change the voicing and we play the G string for number nine. So we play the G string, B string, and G string again. And then for the last group, uh, of three notes, we're playing the, G, the B major again and play the G string, the second, and the D string. So. Now this is the major shape, so you wanna memorize the shape as we're gonna play it for other chords as well. The second chord is G sharp minor. So we're gonna play the bass note on low E string fret number four, and then the D string fret number six and then four and four with the bar chord. We have the same picking pattern and the chord we're gonna go from the G sharp minor to a G sharp minor sus four. So you wanna change the voicing on the G string fret number uh, six. We're gonna do the same for the F sharp major chord. So two, four, three, and two is the same shape as the B major. So 
so we can play it um, with the same voicing as well. So we have F sharp major, and then we play the G string fret number four to an F sharp sus four, and back to the F major, F sharp major. And the last chord. We're playing the E major chord, beautiful sounding chord. We're only picking six, four, three, two, three, and four. It's just like a basic E major. And then we have a beautiful phrase on the G string fret number three, second string, and back to the G string. And then the G string fret four, second, and G string again. Now we're gonna add more notes to the chord, and we're gonna do that by just adding notes around the chord shape. So. And this is another thing that Hendrix used to do a lot, playing notes around the chord uh, within the same position without necessarily you know, changing position all the time. So we arpeggiate the chord, we have six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have just the B major scale played in this position. So you have the D string, fret number nine, and, and, and then on the, G, on the G string we have the uh, fret number six, eight, and nine. Now for the G sharp minor, I'm gonna use this box. But we're only gonna play uh, a few notes. So fret number six, and then three, four, and six. Same thing for the F sharp major. We're gonna play. So fret number four, three, sorry, four, one, three, and four. And then we have the last chord, the E major, which is going to be slightly different. So for the E major, we're going to play... So we're just strumming the bottom four strings, and then the top three strings. And then we have the phrase on the G string, fret number one, three, bass note, four, and six, with a slide. Now we can also take more of a solo approach and play something like this. So as you can see, it's the same approach. I'm just playing more notes and I'm just playing more of a solo. So I'm changing the chord progression. Now we have the G sharp minor chord. So I'm playing the bass note and then the chord. And then I have four notes on the B string, fret number four, and a quick hammer on to fret five, back to fret four, and the G string, fret number six, and four. As you can see, the notes are always within the same position as the chord. Second chord, F sharp. So I'm playing the arpeggio, and then this beautiful double stop. So G and B fret four, and back to G and B fret number three and two. And then this phrase using the pentatonic, it's actually the G sharp minor scale, not the pentatonic, because we're gonna start with the 
B string for number 5 and then 4 and then the G string for number 6 and 4 and 6 and 4 on the D string E major So just a chord twice and then on the G string for number 1, 3, bass, 4 and 8 sliding to fret number 6 and the B major chord beautiful sounding chord we have the bass note and then we're gonna strum the chord and then we're gonna quickly hammer the fret number 9 on the G string and then we go back to the B major and the F sharp and then we play the same Now we can change things up a little bit if you don't want to play the same musical idea, so... And we can finish with this beautiful chord, it's just like... A B major chord, so we're gonna add the E string for number seven. So we literally have the full chord except for the A string. So that's it, guys. This is how we can use the Hendrix technique to add more color and more flexibility to our chords. It's a beautiful technique, so take it step by step. If you already use it, absolutely fine. If you're new to this technique, just really take it step by step. Now I'm gonna leave you to practice this and I'll see you next time for another lesson.